everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here, walking with you in Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 12. We're just about at the end of uh, this writing, and lucky us, more names. Uh, because it's going to depict more Levites, it's going to depict more priests. It's actually now to the celebration, religious festivals uh, that they're going to be celebrating. One of the dedication of the wall, but they treat it as... Um, a religious festival, worship time, to be able to say, thank you, thank you, God. In 52 days, 52 days, less than two months, I mean, just think about that. They built a wall, um, a wall of protection from the outside enemies uh, around a city. No matter how big that city is, 52 days. Um, I know that that cannot happen where I live. Um, to be able to say the permitting process takes at least 52 days. I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, eh, some, some not really too kidding. Uh, but re- reality to that is in these 52 days, they just knew, and the outside nations knew as well, that this wall was favored by God and actually built with the strength of God. Because there's no way that a small nation like Israel coming back to Jerusalem could have the strength to do that, but as we read earlier, God gave them strength day and night to be able to complete this wall. 52 days. A miraculous thing, a provision of God thing, and they're, they're ready to celebrate. And so that's why we have in chapter 12 the listing of these names. These are the priests and Levites um, that will take that position and that authority. But this is the neat thing uh, that we get to see in, in verses 1 through 7. 1 through 7, talk about 22 names um, of the priests and Levites. There was a tradition that David put into, King David, long ago. He, he put in that there is these 24 houses um, of priests and Levites uh, to be able to, uh, to, to guard the temple, uh, to be able to supply the temple, and they were on this rotation. But this is 24 households, um, and those men would be those households, the 24 uh, houses taking care of the temple. Now, this is the neat thing. That's why I say I don't know if you get into numerology, but I do. I love uh, really seeing the numbers and seeing how consistent or what they are relative within Scripture. Go ahead and open up to Revelation chapter 4, and what, what do you see around the throne of God is 24 seats, 24 elders, they would say, 24 people, heads of households, and that was absolutely representing the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles, um, and being able to say, that's what the church, that's what the people of God around the throne of God, the presence of God was built upon, their foundations, the covenant of, uh, the, of, uh, to the tribe of Israel and the covenant that God, that Jesus made within that new covenant, old covenant, new covenant around the presence of God. Well, we get to see here, this was already starting to be laid by God, um, that around his presence, around his temple are these 24 homes, um, these 24 leaders, priests and Levites, uh, to be able to thank God and worship God and lead that worship with the presence of God. And so um, we get to see that Old Testament, New Testament just feeds off one another. So Nehemiah chapter 12, here I go, I get to it, right? Um, And we're not going to read all these names, but you can see uh, these were the priests and the Levites, verse 1, who returned with Zerubbabel, and that was 538, 537 BC, if you remember that, that was 80 years before Ezra came. You're going to see the name Ezra in in verse 1 there. That's not Ezra, the one who came back as the one bringing the law. Um, This is Ezra before coming with Zerubbabel as one of the priests and Levites. And so they returned with Zerubbabel. Um, They built up that temple, uh, and then they're building up that faith of the people. And then Nehemiah came and built that wall 80 years later. As we have this, um, here's those names. Uh, These were the leaders of the priests and their associates in the days of Jeshua, in verse 7 it says. Um, And then it goes farther, um, just relating names and history to put you into this place. Um, And I am going to head down to verse 22. It says, The family heads of the Levites in the days of Eliashab, uh, Joiada, Johanan, and Jadua, as well as those of the priests, were recorded in the reign of Darius the Persian. The family heads among the descendants of Levi up to the time of Johanan, son of Elisha, were recorded in the book of the annals. And the leaders of the Levites were uh, Hashabiah, Sherebiah, Jeshua, son of Kadmiel, and their associates who stood opposite them to give praise and thanksgiving, one section responding to the other. 
as, descri- as prescribed by David, the man of God. And so they have these choirs that would actually be opposite each other, as it, s- it states here, and they would actually be back and forth. What we call that now is what Mark does with the organ in our sanctuary. It's called antiphonal. Um, antiphonal is having these sounds from these different places. We have speakers above the choir. The choir is singing this way, but we also have this the, the organ coming from the back and being able to actually respond to each other against the choir um, and have that sense of surrounding. Um, they got the, the thanksgiving of God and the worship of God is surrounding one another. So Mananiah, Bakhtabukaya, uh, Abadiah, Obadiah, sorry, um, Meshulam, Talman, and Achab were gatekeepers who guarded the storerooms at the gates. They served in the days of Joachim, son of Jeshua, and the son of Josedek, and in the days of Nehemiah, the governor of Israel, the priest and the scribe. Verse 27, at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, the Levites, the Levites were sought out from where they lived and were brought to Jerusalem to celebrate joyfully the dedication with songs of thanksgiving and with the music of cymbals, harps, and lyres. The singers also were brought together from the region around Jerusalem, from the villages of Netophatite, uh, from Beth Gilgal, and from the area of Geba and Asmaveth. For the singers had built villages for themselves around Jerusalem. When the priests and Levites had purified themselves ceremonially, they purified the people, the gates, and the wall. There's a different ritual of being able to say, these are of God. That's that purification. Um, wasn't necessarily purified for the acts. They were purified to be in the presence of God and also be blessed by God. Verse 31, I had the leaders of Judah go up on top of the wall. I also assigned two large choirs to give thanks. One was to proceed on top of the wall to the right toward the dung gate. Uh, Hoshiah uh, and the half of the leaders of Judah followed them along with Azariah, Ezra, Meshalem, Judah, Benjamin, Shemaiah, Jeremiah as well as some priests with trumpets, and also Zechariah, son of Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of Micaiah, the son of Zachor, the son of Asaph, and his associates, Shemaiah, Azarel, Malalai, Gilalai, Maya, Nathaniel, uh, Nathaniel, Judah, and Hanani, with musical instruments prescribed by, as prescribed by David, the man of God, Ezra, the scribe, led the procession. At the fountain gate, they continued directly up the steps of the city of David on the ascent of the wall and passed above the house of David to the water gate on the east. The second choir proceeded in the opposite direction. I followed them on top of the wall together with the half of the people, past the tower of ovens to the broad wall over the gate of Ephraim, the Jeshanah gate and fish gate and the tower of Hananah and the tower of the hundred as far as the sheep gate. At the gate of the guard, they stopped. The two choirs that gave thanks then took their places in the house of God. And so did I. (laughs) Excuse me. Together with half the officials, as well as the priests, Aleichem, Messiah, Menanmin, Micaiah, Elanai, Zechariah, and Hananiah with their trumpets, and also Messiah, Messiah, uh, Shemaiah, Eleazar, Uzi, uh, Johanan, Malkijah, Elam, and Ezer. The choir sang around the, under the directions of Jezariah. And on that day they offered great sacrifices, rejoicing because God had given them great joy. The women and the children also rejoiced. The sound of rejoicing in Jerusalem could be heard far away. At that time, men were appointed to be in charge of the storerooms for the contributions, first fruits, and tithes. From the fields around the towns, they were to bring into the storerooms the portions required by the law for the priests and Levites, for Judah was pleased with the ministering priests and Levites. They performed the service of their God and the service of purification, as did also the singers and gatekeepers, according to the commands of of David and his son Solomon. For long ago, in the days of David and Asaph, there had been directors for the singers and for the songs of praise and thanksgiving to God. So in the days of Zerubbabel and of Nehemiah, all Israel contributed the daily portions for the singers and gatekeepers. They also set aside the portion for the other Levites, and the Levites set aside the portion for the descendants of Aaron. A time of thanksgiving, a time of worship, a time of coming together and making sure that they're encouraging one another in the gifts and the talents that God has given them to be the community of God that he has established. 
They're rejoicing because they're dedicating the wall. They're rejoicing because, again, the temple, just think about this, just 70 years, 80 years earlier, the place was decimated. Uh, the people were decimated. They were in another place. Just a remnant was back in Jerusalem. But God brought them back, solidified their space of worship and his presence among his people. They, that just produced and grew their faith to the point that they even were strengthened to be able to build a wall. And here, 80 years, 90 years later, they get to see and they get to live in the protection, the faithfulness, and the presence of God. It's no small thing. When you look back, you see the picture of God's provision. And we can do that too. Go ahead and look back. And it's a beautiful thing to have that 2020 vision. Looking back and saying, how did God bring me through that? What was God doing in that circumstance? And here we sit. And maybe you're sitting not in a great place right now. But I pray that as you walk forward, you walk forward in faith. You walk forward in the protection and the presence of God. Because then you'll be able to look later into the days and look back on this circumstance and be able to say, that's what he was doing. Thanks be to God. As we look back, we definitely look back to what God was doing 2,000 years ago on the cross. And because of the cross, having the Messiah hanging there and dying for us, forgiving of our sins and then rising from the tomb, our lives always look back to that. Our faith always looks back to that. And it is only one response. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day. Giving thanks to God.